What's up guys? So in this video, I am going to be setting up my powder coating kit. Now I will admit I've never powder coated before, but I have watched several videos on YouTube. So I am of course YouTube certified to do this. Just kidding. Um, I will be setting up a spray booth and I have my oven, which is pretty much plug and play. I haven't done this before, but it's really not that hard. So I think I could figure it out. Now, the way powder coating works, for those of you who may not know, is you get this stuff, which is powder. It's actually like a plastic and it's a very fine powder. If you could see that. And you basically put this in this gun through this container here and you spray it onto a part. Now this powder coating gun here is not like any type of spray gun or anything like that. It is a powder and it uses light air pressure from an air compressor to propel this powder onto the part. And the powder actually clings to the part through static charge. So this gun here actually gets plugged into the wall and you hold this button here as you spray it. And this little alligator clip gets clipped onto your part or a metal piece right next to it. So as you spray this part, the particles of that powder are statically charged and they will be attracted to that part. Now that allows you to get a very even coating and a very thick coating compared to normal spray paint. I'm going to have my powder coating station where I actually powder coat it, a little powder coating booth, and then I will be able to move my powder coated part from there into my oven and let it bake. So a lot of guys have a lot of different solutions to a spray booth. Some guys really don't care so much and they just spray out in the open, which is cool except you get powder everywhere. So I want to try and contain as much powder as I can. And for that, I have this box. This is a wardrobe box I picked up from Home Depot. So I will be setting this up and I'm going to hopefully set this up and cut out the front so that I have access to spray my part. And I also have these, which are 20 by 20 filters. Uh, these are like five bucks at Home Depot. They're kind of cheap and crappy but all I need them to do is uh, filter out the powder. So it's not really that bad. I don't care that they're not super expensive. Uh, they should still work perfectly fine. And I have a box fan here to also help with that. So I'm going to have my box fan on the back of this booth blowing out so that hopefully there's a negative air pressure inside the booth and all that powder is drawn out the back through the filters where it's going to get trapped. As far as my oven goes here, it's pretty much plug and play out of the box. This is a powder coating oven from Eastwood and it has these racks that slide in and out very nicely. And as you can see, they are not completely flat. They actually have a lip on them or a dip and that actually allows you to put them in like this or invert them. So you could put one in the top and you have a little bit more distance when you're hanging stuff. Like I said, that's kind of the opposite on the bottom. You could hang it like this so that you have more room on the bottom. It really doesn't matter. You could have it set up however you want. So this powder coating oven is specialized for powder coating. It's basically an electric oven. You can use a toaster oven if you want. I opted to get this because I don't have an old to toaster oven that I can use. And um, this is really designed for powder coating. So it's going to be easier to use. So if you have an old electric toaster oven, you can use that without a problem. But I opted to go with this since I had to buy a new oven anyhow. I do want to point out that you cannot use an oven for powder coating and then use it for food. You'll probably get sick and die, literally. Please don't do that. This oven right here and all this stuff that I'm using is available from eastwood.com. That's where I bought my stuff. So go check them out. I'll put a link in the description if you are interested.
All right, guys, so here is the finished product. Um, it was fairly easy. Um, I was able to figure this out the first time and I think this is going to work. I won't know if this has any issues until I actually get to powder coating, but I don't see why I should have any major issues. Now, I chose a wardrobe box because I like that it's taller than a normal box. This is 24 inches across by 24 inches deep by 34 inches tall. So it's nice and tall. I can hang my parts nice and high, especially if I have longer parts, I shouldn't have any issues with that. But more importantly, it's, um, it's actually at my height. So if I went with a shorter box, like a medium or something like that, it would be down here. And I would be crouched over trying to work in a small box. So the wardrobe box, I like the size. I like that it's, you know, pre-structured. Um, I could have used some other materials and built mine completely from scratch, but this is a very easy way to get started quickly. You know, the dimensions are already set up for you. And in fact, it came with a nice crossbar that I have in here, uh, which is metal and adds rigidity to this box. But, um, you know, this is a very nice feature to have, and I would have to fabricate that on my own as well by using either a piece of like rebar or threaded, um, you know, threaded rod or something like that. So this is already figured out for me. I don't have to do any of that. So what I did is I cut out the front so that I have access to spray things. I used that piece that I cut out to add stability on each side. Uh, there is a crease in here from the, from Home Depot, I guess, from the box company so that it's not really perforated, but it's creased there so that it will naturally fold at that point. Uh, so I used the top and bottom flap from the front section to add stability to that so that it's nice and sturdy. And I just taped that on, on both sides I did that. And then I used the other section from the front to give me a nice bottom to this box. Obviously it's a box, so I have flaps everywhere. So I was able to use that front section to make a nice smooth bottom. This is a spray booth, so everything's going to be hanging so that I could spray it and that the powder will coat evenly. But I like having a nice smooth bottom instead of having tape down there with, you know, flaps and stuff that's going to be, be in my way. Um, if you look at the back, I have my air filters here. Like I said, these are like cheap $5 filters. If you go to Home Depot or Lowe's or wherever, they have ones that range from like five bucks up to 20 or 30 bucks depending on the size and what they're made out of. This is just for powder coating, it's not that serious. So I just went with the $5 ones and I just taped them on here for now. Uh, they should last a fairly long time, but whenever I have to change them, I'll just cut off the tape and tape on new ones because it's not that serious. And I have my box fan here. Um, I will be moving this stuff around a little bit, but like I said, the idea is that I'll have my box fan positioned behind this box in behind the filters so that it blows air out and it pulls air in from the front. So that'll keep all the powder minimized. Um, you know, so it's not flying everywhere. It's not coming back in my face or anything like that going all over the house. The airflow through the back will trap all my powder and dust and anything else in these filters and really minim limit the amount of powder that's just flying around randomly. So that should really help keep everything down and make it a fairly neat process. Okay, so I am gonna give you guys a quick test of how this works. We'll see if it works. Um, whenever you're spraying, the powder is much finer than what I'm going to simulate right here. So it's going to be in the air, so this may work better when I actually powder coat, or it may not, but I have my fan here right behind this box, so I'm going to turn it on, and I'm going to try and get a little bit of powder in the air and at least see if it heads in that direction. So we'll see how this goes, but... I think it's going to work. So this is just black powder that came with my accessories kit. I am getting more powder coat, powder colors. Uh, Prismatic Powders makes a lot of sick colors. A lot of just, I don't like the word psychedelic, but <laughs> some of their colors are pretty intense and crazy. So I'll probably be definitely ordering uh, stuff from them. I really didn't see too many colors from Eastwood that I was too crazy about, but uh, there you go. I don't know if this is showing up on video very well, but all the powder that's coming out right here is immediately attracted to the uh, to the filters back there through the fan. So I'm very happy with this already. That definitely makes a big difference. Even out here a little bit, you can see that it mostly gets sucked right back there. So 
this is doing exactly what I was hoping it would do, and I'm very excited about that. That's a great sign. So at least one aspect of this box, of this spray booth, is working as it should. So I'm very excited about this. I normally have the seatbelt warning feature turned off because it's annoying as hell. And I always wear my seatbelt when I'm driving anyhow, but it just goes on and on and on and on and on all the time.